Megan Hicks of I Run Far. I'm with Dylan Bowman. It's the day after the 2021 Hard Rock 100. You're a Hard Rock finisher. Finally! Yeah. And so are you, but you're, you had, this is number three for you, number one for me, and uh, number one of many, hopefully, for me. It was amazing. Yeah. We just concluded the graduation ceremony slash awards ceremony. I think you're riding a big high right now. Yes, also completely exhausted, but uh, yeah, 100%. It was a highlight of my career, one of the greatest days of my life, honestly. It was everything I hoped it to be. Yeah. I mean, saying that this is a highlight race career-wise, there's like a lot to unpack there. So can you start with like the nutshell summary of, yeah, why, why those 20, 22 hours and 45, 45 yeah. minutes... Yeah, why that represents such an iconic moment for you? Well, I mean, I've been in the sport now for a while, a dozen years, and I grew up here in Colorado and always wanted to do hard rock. And the first time I was here was in 2011. I've been here many times ever since and just have always wanted to do the race and finally had my first opportunity this year. And I don't know, the, the race has a unique vibe to it, as you know, and I think it's what people who come here are you know looking to sort of experience and that's what they love about the race and I wanted to be part of that I wanted to be part of the hard rock family and uh yeah finally was able to do it and it went better than I could have imagined didn't think I would run that fast and uh yeah over the moon over the moon yeah. let's talk about how the race unfolded um it was a pack guys for 10, 15, 12, 15 miles? Yeah, so there was four of us into Cunningham. It was myself, Francois, Ryan Smith, and Julian Choyer through Cunningham. Okay. And we pretty much stayed very close together through Maggie, I would say. Maybe even in, through Pole Creek, so okay. 20 miles. And then Ryan and I uh, actually settled in together for a long stretch, and Francois was just ahead by a mm. few minutes. And, uh, and then... Ryan sort of fell back for me, uh, sort of going uh, from Sherman to Burroughs and up Handies. Okay. And Francois was, you know, four or five minutes ahead of me for what seemed like forever. <laughs> and I could see him whenever we were above tree line and uh, was really just sort of like trying to maintain some semblance of contact with him. But he's just an absolutely remarkable uh, athlete. And yeah, sort of once we got over through grouse and over engineer then the gap just started growing <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of crazy to have like a competitive race where you're like alone still yeah do you know what i mean a hundred percent where it's yeah. like you can kind of see that person but it's a very abstract because you're you yes. can see him because you're above tree line it's a really unique landscape but they're there and you're here right and it's just so quiet there's nobody out there it doesn't feel like you're racing <laughs> but uh i you think like that's what down and see a bib number that's what makes hard rock so cool mm -hmm. it's just like it's so different than any, anything else and it's it is like communal but it's also very solitary and that was uh my experience yesterday and uh yeah like i said i mean still just like trying to absorb everything that went down because it, it did feel like it was over before it even started and um, yeah I feel like there's a, there's still a lot to sort of learn from the whole thing you uh, I think you had pacers for like the whole distance that you mm. were allowed to have pacers you picked up your first one in grouse yeah so Hillary Allen uh, met me in grouse and took me to Ure, so over engineer and she was great it was awesome to have mm. her company and she had just done the soft rock around the mountain too. Quite familiar so, yeah, with the course. Yeah. And I was very not talkative. So she, uh, you know. <laughs> and Hillary's talkative. She's, she's talkative. <laughs> she's very friendly. Uh, she was absolutely like uh, doing everything she could to sort of tell me about what was coming up because I didn't really know the course either. So, um, you know, getting all that beta and information from her was really helpful too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I had Topher Gaylord who took me over Virginia's Pass, so Ure to Telluride, which was amazing. Topher's been a great friend and mentor to me throughout my my career. And then Tyler Green took me home. I think um, you experienced an incredible sunset with yes. Topher yeah. going up to Kroger's. Yeah. I mean, again, just like 
a highlight of my running career, you know, getting up to Kroger's. And, Honestly, uh, what's that like being up there? I mean, the photos, the light is unreal. I, I, I mean, you didn't don't expect to get to Kroger's when it's still daylight out. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's when I actually Topher was the one who told me that we were well ahead of course record pace. And hmm. um, you didn't so, know till then. No, I didn't. No, because I never like feel. keep splits or anything like that. So I was just running by feel. And Topher said, "Yeah, you guys are way faster." And I was like, "Oh no." <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> oh. Because like it didn't feel like we were pushing, but as I said to you, I think it was really good conditions, really fast conditions, sort of the opposite of Western states this year, and that it was just pleasant, mm-hmm. pleasant running all day. But the yeah, the sunset from Kroger's Canteen, Virginia's Pass, a big hug from Joe Grant up there and his crew, and then descending into Telluride, it was like the most spectacular. Like you could never even like you know paint a picture as beautiful mm-hmm. as what we got to enjoy on our way down to Telluride. You guys, um, I mean, you did the fighting part of this race in the dark by yourself on these remote passes out there. What was that like? It's so hard. The race is just like so relentless. (laughs) And yet we're so happy today. Oh my gosh. (laughs) It was just incredible. I mean, just like the section from Uray to the top of Oscars Pass. It was just brutal, you Mm. know, because it's 5,500 foot climb and then a quick descent and then a 4,500 foot climb. And it's just like, it feels like you've been climbing for like Ages. eight hours by the time you get the top of Oscars Pass. And then, if, as you know, it doesn't end there. Then you got to go up Grant Swamp and it's just like, it keeps coming, it keeps coming. And yeah, like I, uh, I really lost my ability to eat for a long time, mm-hmm. but I was still moving well. Like I wasn't feeling great, but I was moving well and I knew I was moving well. But at every aid station to come in and get the feedback that Francois's lead was continuing to grow, I was just like, wow. Like, he is just such a remarkable athlete. And I just, it's it's hard to find the words to describe how impressed I am by the fact that he beat me by an hour. And uh, you, and know, you ran what you ran. Yeah, and I, yeah. I ran way faster than I thought I would. Yeah. So. Um, were you also at the same time getting feedback on who was behind you in the gap that you were, you know, you were cementing yourself into second place pretty heartily yeah a a little bit I mean it became pretty clear to me like okay it would take Francois having getting off course or having something really wrong happen for me to catch him so you know it wasn't like I was complacent wanting to just protect second place but you know I was doing everything I could to just continue to to move forward and occasionally I would get an update that Ryan was 20 or 30 minutes back and because I felt like I was still moving well, I, I never really felt like I was that threatened uh, from behind. But I mean, I have so much respect for Ryan too. I've known him a long time. I feel like he always like sort of flies under the radar and is a much stronger athlete than he gets credit for. Mm. And I mean, he showed it yesterday as well. What was it like to cross the finish line? And it's like, yeah, not even close to daylight. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. You know, I, I figured the, my headlamp would be in my backpack, but <laughs> oh, it's so cool. Yeah, to just cross the river and have those final 5K, which is like finally where you can run, actually you know, run. you can actually <laughs> run. And my legs worked and I was just like, I don't know. I just felt it, you know, it was just like, wow, mm. what a freaking adventure. Mm. And, uh, yeah, to come into town at 4.30 in the morning, 4.45 in the morning, kiss the rock and uh, have, you know, some friends and family there to enjoy it with me. It was goosebumps moment. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty wild course. Any animal stories, river incidents, natural phenomena? No, I mean, it was a pretty tame day from that perspective. But I did see uh, on the cli- the final climb up to Putnam. Okay some glowing eyes in the night, you know, with my, my headlamp. Um, and they were wide set eyes. So it did spook me a little bit. Cause I don't, I don't think it was a deer or anything. Mm-hmm. I think it was something larger than that. Mm-hmm. But I, after, you know, a mile of checking over my shoulder every 30 <laughs> seconds, Wanting I felt safe. Tall. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Luckily I had my poles out just in case, you know, you like, have self-defense. Uh, Come at me. I've, ra- yeah. I've run 95 miles, yeah. but I got more. Yeah. <laughs> last question for you you've had kind of a month yeah like it's been um there's been a lot packed into this month for you you led western states's live coverage which is 
it was 30 hours of coverage, but a whole week of work. Mm -hmm. You had a little bit of break and now you're here this week. Art, yeah, what now? Oh, it's going to be a big come down, that's for yeah. sure. No, I, um, yeah, I mean, both experiences were the two of the greatest experiences of my career, honestly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, as you know, I, I just love, love the sport, love what we do. And I can't tell. Love the people, <laughs> love the vibe. And, uh, yeah, just feel privileged to be part of it, you know, and to get to, contribute you know in a couple different ways to participate as an athlete to help spread the word and and help you know tell the story a little bit too um it's fun for me yeah. and uh and so you know trying to yeah just kind of like keep that going especially as we have more races going on and we can start gathering more um yeah i get a lot of joy from that are you going to sit on the couch at least a little bit? Yes, okay, of course. Good. Oh, I'm great at sitting on the couch. I'm relieved to hear yeah. that. How was your day? It was great. I mean, it was hard because it's hard rock, yeah. but it was great. Third place? Yeah, thanks for asking. Awesome. Yeah. Who gets to do your interview? I think that Brian will do it <laughs> later today. Let's okay, see. well, if he needs a break, you guys call me and I'll do the Megan Hicks interview. Should we just switch the mic right Let's now? Let's just switch the mic. <laughs> okay. Up to you. I mean, I don't want to step on Brian's toes, but... I'll just break it and do it. I'm sure okay. he'll be happy. Why Let's not? do it. <laughs>